Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 9. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, again, and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, putting God down to who he is. If you don't have a Hebrew God, you're in trouble. I got a God of the Arabians. That's ain't it. I got a God of the Americans. I got a Roman God. No. Let my people go that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and will refuse to let them go, and will hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, move, which is in the field type of the world upon the horses upon the asses upon the camels upon the oxen upon the sheep there shall be a very grievous moran anthrax anthrax this God is I gotta be careful when I say apis a P I S. He is the sacred bull. Reborn after death. Aaron, what kind of trouble did you get Israel into? He is probably the first God of all Egypt. The first God that Egypt ever had, they believe. He's the God of fertility and agriculture. You can't get away from sex, can you? Uh, for sex. Fertility and agriculture. You ready for this one? Drum roll. He became king after his death. Now, to me, that's a bunch of bull. Damn, my light just turned out. Forgive me, the light just burnt out. I ain't you just want to something going on with this thing here. You know, ooh, I burned myself. Ooh, sorry, folks. Whew, that burned. Okay, where was that? Ow, that hurt. So, we've got an imitation Jesus Christ bull god. Where Jesus Christ is a lamb. And we're, why are we going here? Now this God is a black cow. Black, black cow. Bull. You remember what Aaron made? Cow. He made a golden cow. And they danced and did the boogie woogie. Where is that? Here it is. What is the greatest of all the restaurants but a beef? Hamburgers, steak, milk. 
And here it is. Now it's horses, camels, oxen, animals in the field. But this would probably be that god, Apis, with anthrax. And we know today, when I first started reading the Bible up to a few years ago, I am, okay, anthrax, that's okay. But now, since with news and terror attacks and people, we know how deadly anthrax is. You got to shut the whole place down. You got to send people in protective clothing. You can affect a whole office building, if not a whole city, by one envelope. And God is causing it. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is children of Israel. So. Israel cows, nothing's going to touch them. The cows of the world of Egypt are going to be affected. The miracle is, you cannot hide your Egyptian cow with the Israel cow. God's going to know the difference. We have a separation of sheep and goats in chapter 9. And God knows who you are. And it says it's going to be grievous. Your livestock are going to die. And the Lord appointed a set time. That's another word in the Bible you need to start recognizing. Time. Time will be set in forth a prophecy. Saying tomorrow. So I, I think there's a song about Tomorrow. The Lord shall do this thing in the land. Pharaoh was asked, When do you want this to happen? Tomorrow. And God said, Okay, I'll keep doing it tomorrow. Now, why is God doing this? Why is God saying tomorrow? Because of God's long suffering. And it has been proclaimed before Pharaoh that this is going to happen tomorrow. Everything that's happened so far. Pharaoh, before tomorrow, can step up and say, Moses, Aaron, I want to get right with God. Don't, don't have it happen. So don't tell me God is forcing Pharaoh to go to hell by making him change his heart. He's given Pharaoh 24 hours. Well, I don't know how long it is. I'd be wrong to give it time. He's given Pharaoh the next day. Give him a chance to say, Moses, all right, let's go. I, I, I'm going to listen to God finally. Do you see God not giving Pharaoh a chance tomorrow? That's one of the messages I, I call out to people. You may die today, but as long suffering God, he may give you tomorrow. So tomorrow, the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. See, God did it. No repentance. And all the cattle of Egypt died. But the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Well, that's interesting. Segregation in the Bible. God's a cruel God. All the black cows died and all the Jewish cows stayed alive. They're going to rampage. They're going to have a riot. You got to be realizing that God does separate people. He separates his people, the Jews, from all the world. He separates Christians from all the lost. Somebody's going to step up and say, Well, oh God, you know, black lives ladder. Yeah? My son's life is the best life of all, and I gave it for you. And Pharaoh sent... And behold, there was not one of the cattle of Israelites dead. He said, Word, go check this out. So he is listening to Moses. Moses said, your cattle are going to die, but not Israel. You, you want to go check that out and see if any Israel. Go up, make, check all Israel. 
Now, he may get the facts back from this guy. Your Highness, Your Honor, God, whatever you call the Pharaoh. Every single Hebrew, to full count, has not died. And he's got the facts, but he will not change his heart. So you can send an idiot to Bible college, and that's not going to make him know God anymore. You can give somebody all the facts of the tribulation period. You can give them all the facts of the 66 books of the Bible. You can give them all the facts of the King James Bible. That's not going to get him closer to God. you got to get him to Jesus Christ. And Pharaoh said, and Behold, there was not one of the cattle of Israel dead, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and uh, by God, no, by Pharaoh. What is Pharaoh's problem right now? How dare you do that to me and my people? And those brown-skinned people who are just slaves and scum are still living. This is a prejudiced thing. It was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And you will deal with something. You, not with, you may have somebody in your life put in front of you will be just like this. And God tells you to do something, give them a Bible, give them a, a, a Christian Christmas card, give them a track. You know, he's got problems with life. He comes, hey, listen, pray for my, pray. But he may not get right. You say, what is all the worst people you can find in the Bible? I would say Pharaoh here. This guy has had opportunity after opportunity, the long-suffering of God, and he will show us people standing at the great white throne judgment. Imagine a lost man, 2017, standing at the great white throne judgment, coming from America, any of the 49 lower states. He has had opportunity to, to get employment. He has opportunity to get food if he can't get a job. He has had all kinds of opportunities given to him that is never found in a third world country. Now, when you see a child that has a bloated stomach in a third world country, that is because they have not eaten. When you see a, a person in America with a bloated stomach, he's had too much to eat. Isn't that interesting? And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handful of ashes of the furnace. And it's funny because when we get to Jeremiah, there's a bunch of people who say, Jeremiah, what do we do? Well, you know, you stay here, God. But, well, no, no, that's wrong. Beirut has conspired against you. We're going to drag you in, into Egypt, which God told you not to go. And God told Jeremiah, I forget what it was, but it has to do with the, built, the brick kilns of the furnaces. And here are those furnaces again. In the world, you find the furnaces. And there's ever a point for furnaces in the history current of the Jewish people is what Adolf Hitler did throughout Europe with furnaces and the Jewish people. Daniel, the book of Daniel, and the furnaces of the three Hebrew boys, or men. And yet hell is likened to a furnace. Hell is the furnace. Ashes of the furnace. And let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. He walks up to Pharaoh. And I believe there's some kind of thing that magic dust they do in the air. Comes out of a Bible. Okay. And it shall become small dust in the land of Egypt, and shall be boils breaking forth with banes. Banes of blister. It's also a bladder growing on the roof or the tongue against the windpipe. When you look up blame. Upon man, upon beasts, throughout all the land of Egypt. Now this is the first attack 
upon man himself. You say, well, you had lice. Well, you know what? lice crawl around. All right, you can pick a lice off. You can get, there's something you can get in the storage where you, I guess you wash it and comb it and all that. You can do that with lice. You ain't going to remove this boil. And if you want something interesting to do, go look at the way that the Egyptians, early Egyptians, took care of medical things. You will have urine, crocodile dung. It's interesting. Go look on the internet. What? And this is what the class that Moses would have grown. It says Moses was was educated in the Egyptian way. We're going to see a little bit more. Banes upon man, upon beast. You know beast animals suffer because of Adam? You know how many animals were to die by the sacrifices of God in Jerusalem because of man and his trespasses? A lamb was to die in the morning, a lamb was to die at night. I think those animals help. I'm going to say as far as you ever watched the Flintstones. I'm being serious here. Maybe I'm wrong. I guarantee those animals probably help Adam and Eve do things. Go up to a draft. Draft, I can't reach those fruit up there. We don't have a ladder. Okay, boom, here you go. Okay, monkeys, we, we want some of those bananas. Now cut it out. Just give me some of those bananas. Yeah, you can have some. I believe that. But since the fall, since the fall, we don't have that friendly neighborly with with the animals you say well how well, why do you say that where did they get these ideas about animals and, and cartoons where did they get the idea of talking animals serpent talked it was an animal and eve did not oh my she, she just started talking back to it like they're having a conversation and i gotta read that like Eve, you're talking to an animal. And yet, cartoons do that. I grew up with talking animals. So, upon the beast, and they took the ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it toward the heaven. You think of Pharaoh by now, like, okay, knock it off, let's get right. You know? And Moses sprinkled it toward the heaven. Shoot. And it became a boil breaking forth upon the blains of upon man. So according to the definition, it was in the mouth too. Now I had have had two boils in my life two different times. And you want to talk about something that will get your attention. It was on my back and on my shoulder. And I don't want to be sick, but I just want to tell you that one of them boils I had squirted across the room. Like a fire hydrant. Sorry about this picture just being a little dark. But, um, in Job chapter 2, Job is struck with boils from the top of his head to the sole of his foot. He grabs a broken portrait and he scrapes them off. That means they broke. And it's actually, it's disgusting. What's in those things and what comes out of those things. So let me get into this one. Isis, Isis, Is, Is, is the God. Now that's the Greek God. Is, Is. Aset. A S E T is the Egyptian God. Are you ready for this one? We just had the sacred bull that dies and became a king. Aset is the queen of the throne, the queen of the gods. She's the goddess of medical and magic. So... The magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boil was upon the magicians. Their God had failed them with their magic and their healing. You were going to a magician 
as you would go to a doctor today. And the magicians now have the boils. God has attacked their God, and they can't stand before Mo Moses. They can't stand before Pharaoh. They can't stand before the people because their God has failed them. So there is an act here of unhealing by the magicians. You want to turn Pharaoh's heart away? How many times? Three or four times? Okay. Ready? Mr. Marvel Man? Here's a health problem. Solve it. Oh, we got this great big AIDS. We get, oh, we got AIDS conquered now. Okay? What about cancer? You got that solved yet? Mr. Magicians, Mr. Physicians, you got that solved yet? America is Pharaoh. We're not listening to God and Moses and Aaron saying, hey, will you get right? Will you do right? Will you put the Bible back in the classroom? Will you put that Bible back in the, in the courtroom? Will you execute those murderers? Oh, no, you're going to put them out? Okay, fine. We'll just let them kill more people. Meanwhile, you think I'm going to be in your health care? You're more interested in saving whales than you are a, a baby in the womb. You, you think I'm going to bless you? We're no different from Egypt, friends. So this God attacks the magicians who are the physicians. God is saying to these magicians and doctors, nah, 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 you can't take it. We come a long way from boils because we keep, you know, look what we can do now. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Okay, the Lord said, hey, listen, buddy, you're not going to get right. Don't get right. And he hearkened not unto them. Who? Moses, Aaron, and the magicians. Pharaoh should have looked at those magicians and say, oh, okay. You guys are phonies. As the Lord has spoken unto Moses. I'd love this next one, God. Okay, so. We now have. And the Lord said unto Moses, rise up early in the morning. And stand up, stand before Pharaoh. I almost said stand upon Pharaoh. Stand before Pharaoh. Yeah, it's interesting here. He still allowed him in his presence. Even by now, at least, I mean, if you would think the president of the United States, whoever was the president, you think the president of the United States would shut the bars of these men and say, you ain't coming to the White House no more. I would alert my circuit service if you see those people. And he has. There are certain people who cannot go before the president because of what they believe and what they do. I cannot take a King James Bible and walk up to the front door of Pennsylvania Avenue to meet the president and his wife and talk to him about Jesus. And yet Pharaoh's still letting these two go. But he won't listen. Friend, just because they open the door and let you in and they hear you out does not mean they're going to get saved. So don't pull out say this prayer before you leave. They just might be lonely. They just might like to have company. Before Pharaoh say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. It's a repeat. It's a repeat. For I will at this time and all my plagues upon thy heart, on thy heart, on thy heart. That's the problem. On thy heart. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. He's not believing. And upon thy servants. So they're not wanting to get right. The entire Capitol Hill of Pharaoh does not want to get right with God. And upon thy people, the Egyptians. For thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. 
that when God says you shall know, then you shall know I am God. You, that, those words follow something that's just unbelievable that will happen. And when we get to the end of Pharaoh's life, and you shall know, Pharaoh shall know that I am the Lord. You know what that means? Pharaoh has been cast into hell forever. And at that point, Pharaoh will know, oh, now I know God. You're God. That's too late. That is too late. You know, I thank God I had a grandma that was almost like, I'm not, what's the story we're leaving here? Come with me to church. No, never. Uh-uh. You just come. Come on. It's a brand new church. It's not like what you... No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to hear about it. No, blah, blah, blah. If I... You know what I just said one day? Okay, fine. Just, just shut you up. I'll go. And I got the time. And I went. And I went. And I heard the word of God. And that within that week, I've asked Jesus Christ to save my soul. I know God. And I know Jesus Christ by belief. I'm going to heaven. This guy's going to know God by entering into hell. And he's never going to come out. And there are people we preach to that we know, we know their faces, we may know their name, and we know the only way they're going to believe our message is when they're burning in hell, and that hurts our feelings. But they're so foolish. And can you imagine Moses and Aaron walking away? Why won't this guy get right? At this time, I'll send all my plagues. Verse 15, for now I'll stretch out my hand. I will smite thee and thy people with pestilence. And thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up for knowledge of God to show in thee my power. God said, listen, I knew how you're going to act. I know what you're going to do. Uh, this is the time that I will set to use you. For my power. God knew when Judas would be born. And what ages and stuff he would do. God knew that. And God knew Judas's heart. To show thee in thee my power. And that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Psalms 8.1 As yet exalteth thou thyself against my people will pride there that thou will not let them go you, you know you're god you're somebody important behold tomorrow long suffering about this time i will cause it to rain a very grievous hail and as has not been in egypt since the foundation thereof even unto now, you're going to get a storm that you never, ever, no one's ever recorded ever such like in Egypt. This is going to be for the record books. Unto now. Okay, 19 and 20 are very interesting. Send therefore now and gather thy cattle. Now there's a thing here because God said in Verses 9, 1 through 7, that all the cattle were to be killed. Now he's saying, gather thy cattle. And there's, there's a lot of answers out there. He could have taken or paid for the Egyptian cows. He could have ordered other cows. And all that thou hast in the field, in the world. For upon every man and beast, which shall be found in the field, and shall not be brought home. The hail shall come down upon them, and they shall die. God, you're mean. You leave it outside, it's going to die. Leave it outside, it's going to die. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Period. No. Let's read on. Let's read the whole Bible. Judge not least should be judged. Let's finish it. He that feareth the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into their houses. There are people in Pharaoh's palace, whatever they call that building, 
Did you hear what Moses Aaron said? Yeah. Go home. You got a holiday. What Pharaoh gonna say? Go home. <laughs> hey. Whatever they yo. Hey, my employer just told me to go home because Moses and Aaron said that, that you know anybody who's outside on this date they're going to get killed. Uh, you want to pass this around or you want to go home? Get to the store, get water, get get supplies. The hurricane's coming. Moses and Aaron said so. So free will. If you feared God. You people go home. You, this is employers telling their employees, you go home. Take my stuff, protect it, and you go home, protect your stuff. That's interesting. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord, get that. Inspiration. Moses and Aaron has been speaking the word of God to Pharaoh. And God says, if you don't listen to Moses and Aaron, you are not listening to the word of God. Jesus said, if a man does not listen to my word, he's a man that has built his house on the sand. And when the troubles came, when the storms came, great was the destruction thereof. Now, if those priests did not get the story of Exodus, was that illustration? And if a man hear my word, he's one that built his foundation on a house. And the storms, hail, fire, lightning came. And he was safe and scared by listening to the word. I like that. Jesus knew the scriptures. He that regards not the word of God left his servants and his cattle in the field. That's not good. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch forth thy hand toward the heaven. If I was Pharaoh, I'd tie that thing down and steal the rod of Aaron. If I was Pharaoh. You know, like uh, King Saul with that, uh, with that spear. Javelin, that's what it is. I was sneaking in the night and grabbed that javelin and hide it from him. See, sometimes I think weird about the Bible. Stretch forth thy hand towards heaven. These are the same hands that when the Bible came that they held up. And Bimelik lost when the hands went down and Bimelik won. Remember that with the hand? This is the same hand that Moses took the rod and the, and the waters parted. This is the same hand that, you know, the rocks came up. You know he got in trouble. The rock gushed. Water. I wonder if that's the same hand that went out and shook Jesus' hand or something. Ooh, it's the Messiah. Maybe. Stretch your hand towards heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, upon man, upon beast, upon every herb. Ooh, now we're attacking plants. Herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. That's a plant, not a gentleman. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail. Who sends the hurricanes? Who sends the tornadoes? Who's in charge of the rain? Well, here we are today. If you follow this weather front right here, then we go northerly winds, a chance of, you know, no, 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 no. Shut that guy off. It's God. And God plays with the God and the meteorologists. Well, you see, this hurricane's going to go right up the east coast of Florida. It's going to destroy everything on the east. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Now, the, the, it's going a little more west, friends. So, you see, if you go all the time here, well, now it's going to go with northern Torah up the road. Oh, wait, we've got to change that again because now it's still going. Well, that's God making fun of the gods of meteorology in America. You keep on saying where, where you think it's going to go. And then sometimes God may, okay, is that where you want it to go? Perfectly fine. Set that, set that tornado, that thing right where you want it to go. Next time, why don't you just say, hurricane's going to go north of the Atlantic Ocean and hit nobody. Why don't you try saying that and I'll listen to you. Maybe. I don't know. Just tell us why the men to shut up and let God do what he's going to do with that storm. 
Don't predict it to say, all right, this is the present location, this is the path, and may as a nation, maybe we get down on our knees in the schools and the courtrooms and the public places, and we get down on our knees and ask for the mercy and grace of God that we may believe on His Son, Jesus Christ, and let God spare us of those storms. It ain't going to happen, that's why the storms come. And somebody's going to say, oh, look at that. He's blaming the storms on America. Well, you better believe I am. I don't think we're going to finish this chapter tonight. <laughs> Beasts, and upon every herb of the field, and throughout the land of Egypt, Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and rain, and fire. Ouch. Not only lightning, fire. It's almost like Sodom and Gomorrah. Ran. <laughs> this fire is boogieing. It's going horizontal. Along the ground. Lightning's vertical. This fire is horizontal. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So that there was hail and fire mingled with hail. The hail, which is ice, had fire. That's impossible. Because if you had hail and fire, you would get rain. Not with God. Imagine getting hit with an ice ball and getting third degree burned. Somebody wow, I never thought of it like that. Yeah. Very grievous. Ow. Oh, that burned. Ow. Such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. Why such and such in the land of Egypt? Because this maybe is what happened to Sodom. Only so far. You're getting whacked in the head with these things and then you're getting burned. Your hair burns up. You get hit in the arm, ow, and then you get burns. I just got burned on my light bulb, and it hurts. It still hurts. And the hail smoked throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, the world, both man and beast. Can you imagine what that smell is like, the burning of flesh and hair? And hides? And the, and the hail smoked every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. This is almost like a hurricane tornado with a fire. This is what happens in America with fire. Every herb of the field, plants, trees are being destroyed and break every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, were no hail. There's a proper division of God and his people and the world. The, the Israelites are sitting over there watching. Wow, check that out. And we are not in the eye of the storm. We are in the eye of God, the apple of God's eye, protected. How's that? Would you get down and rejoice and thank God that's not coming to your house? Go over there and pet your cow? Like, oh God, thank you for petting my cow. Hey, did you thank God for getting out of that hurricane for you? Did you thank God that you're still alive and what you still have? I'm still thanking God. Israel, when they get in that wilderness, when they get in that journey, they're not. Remember, Israel's living all this. This stuff is now not happening to them. It's happening to their enemies. Remember, they're seeing this, and when they're griping, complaining in the wilderness. So people, I've had people tell, well, if I just saw God, if Jesus just came to me. No, brother, you haven't read Exodus. You have not read Numbers. And if they did see God... Like they done, they heard the voice of God, Exodus 20. And they still defiled him. They still rejected him. Moses, I mean Moses, Adam and Eve in a perfect state saw and walked and talked with God. And look what happened. And Pharaoh sent, and here he goes again, and called for Moses and Aaron. Oh, okay, now, wait a minute. He doesn't really want to report. He wants Moses and Aaron. And said unto them, I have sinned. This time. This time? This time? 
Come on, you got the kid. You have not ever sinned before but this time. Oh, I didn't tell you the name of the God of the sky, did I? For the storm. Are you ready? I'll spell it to you. Here we go. Ready? N U T. Nut. This, this is a, the sky god. Nut. He's depicted as a, drum roll please, a cow. Move. What kind of trouble did Aaron get himself into? Was that golden cow? The sacred bull? The sky god? Oh God, please don't let it rain on our church picnic this Saturday. Please, Lord God. And some farmer's like, Lord God, will you please give us some rain so I can grow some corn? I forgot to mention that, did you? Nut. So God's dealing with nut. And Pharaoh's saying nut is not working. Pharaoh's a nut for believing nut. So now he turns to God and says, I've sinned this time. I've sinned this time. You've been sinning all along, brother. It's been written down. You and your conduct and what you are doing is written down in the words that Jesus said, my words will never. What we read about you, Pharaoh, will be in heaven forever. Isn't that interesting? I have sinned this time. Now, <laughs> that's someone who's not going to get saved at that point. They've got to acknowledge all their sins. The Lord is righteous. You know, see? Oh, see, he said he was a sinner, and he's claiming the Lord is righteous. Yeah, he just sinned just this time. That's it. No other time. He's not going to put all the sins under the blood. There are times that, Lord, you know what? I don't even know what sins I've had I need to confess. Because there's too many. I heard one preacher one time, he don't say that. I want to be clean. The day that I got saved, I said, Lord, I am a sinner. I have done so much. And it came into my heart. It came into my mind. And since I don't even know I did, which I know I did, which I can't think of right now. And what are you going to do when you get old age and you forget things you're doing? Lord God, I have sinned. I don't even remember sinning. And there are some sins I've done I don't want to remember. And it's not coming to my conscience. I need to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know I sinned just now. But Lord, what about yesterday? What about last week? There's some still some sins on record from last week. You better confess them sins. Even if you don't know what they are. There are sins that we do that we don't even know we did yet. Go ask Ahab. When his wife went to go kill somebody. He had no idea what was going on until he was told. you got to ask God. he got to say, God, when you're alone, by yourself, say, God, is there anything right now that is so in our relationship between you and me? And you better believe God will answer right away. I know what he says to me. Patience. Like, Lord, God, not that one. Stop that one. You stop that one. It's not just now. He says, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous. Okay. He's confessing with his mouth. Romans 10, but he's not believing with his heart. You need both. And I and my people are wicked. It sounds okay. It sounds right. Entreat the Lord. For it is enough. Ooh, I've had it. This is it. This is true. He fears the the weather and not God. Does that sound familiar? How many people today when we went to the farmer's market and preached, how many people say, you know what? God is mighty. You won't believe what God just did in Florida. Man, we want to get right. No. No. They cheered when we left. That's pity. Entreat the Lord for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunders in hell. See what he's afraid of? He's not afraid of God. He's afraid of thunder and lightning. There are a lot of people afraid of thunder and lightning. And they don't care what God has to say. 
and I will let you go, and will sh and ye shall stay no longer. That sounds good. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am going out of the city, I will spread aboard my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hail. Now see, he's getting happy now. Whew. Wow. And thou mayest know that the earth is the Lord's. Psalm 24, 1. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God. I can see his servant saying, Judge not, least ye be judged. That's not what God would say. Moses and Aaron now know. You know what, brother? You're lying to us. Judge not according to appearance, but judge rightness judgment. Moses has dealt with this guy long enough that, you know what? I know you're lying to me. But because you asked, then Jesus said, if your enemies ask, give them. There you go. So Moses went out of the city. Wait a minute, hold on. But as for, I know that they will not fear the Lord God. Verse 31. And the flax and the barley were smitten. It's interesting, barley in the Bible. Mark that one. For the barley was in the ear. And the flax was boiled, which is a seed pod. Bold. Bold, boiled, bold. So they were up. As a plant but the wheat and the rye were not smitten for they were not grown up they're probably still in the ground Isaiah 28 23 on that Isaiah 28 23 and Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh spread aboard his hands under the Lord and the thunders and the hail cease and the rain was not poured upon the earth. So Moses is walking in a storm. Now, did it not say the children of Israel did not get no rain and all that happening? Can you just picture Moses and Aaron walking up to Moses? I mean, walking up to Pharaoh and there's nothing around them? They got this channel or something of clear weather. Speaking before Pharaoh. <laughs> Opposite of the commercial, the cartoon with the cloud yeah. over somebody's head. Yeah, you got, you know, it's the opposite. If that, I don't know if, if Moses and Aaron had that thing, but they're the children of Israel. That would be a sign to Moses. Do you see the children of Israel looking over there like, I see a clearing over there. It's getting closer. Oh, it's Moses and Aaron. Okay. You know, I don't know. I like to think weird things like that when I'm reading in my Bible. I don't think it's wrong, but I'm not sure. So, and when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder were ceased. See, that's what feared him. That's what he was afraid of. Not God. He sinned yet more. Now look how the Bible said that one. I sinned this time. All right, really? You're going to sin. You just sin some more, buddy. You are not under the count of having your sins washed. Ooh. Holy Spirit, you're mean. Holy Spirit, you're judgmental. Well, guess what? Jesus did not say, judge not, least he be judged yet. <laughs> he sinned yet more and hardened his heart. He and his servants. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go as the Lord had spoken. So I will let you go. Ye shall stay no longer. He lied. Let's go to Psalms oh, 78.44. Psalms 78.44. Psalms has a great history. Of what we're reading about. Psalm 78, 44. Hold my finger. I know you guys don't want to hear it. Oh. 78, 44. 
and he turned their rivers into blood, and their floods they could not drink. He sent divers sorts of flies among them, which devoured them? The flies? That's something we didn't read the other night. And frogs, which destroyed them. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar and their labor to the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. Not just hail, he gave them a frost. If you've been up north, if that early frost comes too early, your crops, your garden's dead. He gave up their cattle also to hail and their flocks to hot thunderbolt. He's out there with the lightning with that fire. There goes that sheep. He's cooked. There goes that cow. He's beef. And that's what Pharaoh's, he's looking out his window. They're gone. Watch that tree. It's burnt up. He cast upon them their fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. There's a lot more <laughs> what happened in Exodus than what we just read. There are angels running around. They're, they are being de they were devoured by flies. I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, were the flies so powerful that they were eating the people? You gotta read scripture with scripture. This is not just okay. One, two, three. We're done. An hour movie, two hour movie. Exodus is done, and they come out. When they left Exodus, what we're reading in the middle, and we're not done yet. That place looked like. Worse than Hiroshima, worse than the nuclear attack, worse than the bombing of Europe during World War One and World War Two. Pharaoh's looking at that weather and say, "Oh my!" Because it's not just a thunderstorm. It's not just lightning. Man, there are evil angels. There is fire. There is hail, and there is frost in Egypt. That's interesting. And with all that, Pharaoh goes into hell, and then finally he knows God is God. Isn't that sorry? I know somebody right now, they're, they're, they're living, praying for him. I have seen God do things in his life to get him to get right. And if he goes off to hell, at that point he's going to know God is God forever and eternity. What did that, that rich man in hell, how did he know that God was God? By being in hell. And he never asked to come out. But I'll tell you one thing he asked for. While well, he had a chance. Before Revelation 20 ever happened, he, had, he said, will you go tell my family not to come here? It's interesting. 